In this episode of Travelog, we ride west into the wilderness, where spaces are vast and vacant, but bewitchingly beautiful. Here in the deserts of Dunhuang, we catch a glimpse of Earth's last species of truly wild horse, get chased by wild camels, and discover lush sanctuaries surrounded by sand. G'day guys, here we are setting up tent at Destination Dunhuang, which was once an extremely important garrison town on the Silk Road. Now it's one of the very few places in the entire world where you can find uh, the last remaining species of truly wild horse in its natural habitat. Now, if you're wondering why I've travelled all this way out into the desert to set up camp, we're going to be following a team of scientists who are dedicated to the conservation of flora and fauna at the Shabowski's Horse. Volunteering, tourism, voluntourism, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be an exciting, amazing adventure, I'm sure of it. So why don't you join me? My name is Dri, and this is Travelog. Dunhuang is a city in China's northwest, in Gansu province perched on the edge of the Gobi Desert. Its location on the religious and cultural intersection of the Silk Road, combined with the desolate beauty of its topography, has bestowed upon it a number of breathtaking historical relics. One of them, the ruins of a gate that once connected east and west. This behind me is Yumen Pass, and merchants on the Silk Road would have had to come through here after the pass diverged into two at Dunhuang City. Now just eight kilometers away from here is Yumen Pass Station, and that's our expedition base. Out here, 2,500 kilometers west of Beijing, it's like I'm walking in an era before the dawn of humanity. It's isolated, mysterious, romantic, but it's not just barren wasteland. Here there is water, and where there is water, there is life. And at this research station, there's a program that gets volunteers involved in protecting this life. As a teenager, I was a bit of a biology nerd, kind of still am, so I signed up. And because it's the summer holidays, I'm now stuck with a bunch of high school kids. Hooray! Hello 雨门 Pass Station is one of several research bases dotted across Dunhuang West Lake National Nature Reserve. The reserve is a wildlife protection zone six times the size of Hong Kong, and access is restricted. Day one of the program is focused on the elusive, endangered, and recently reintroduced Shabowski's horses, named after the Russian explorer who first scientifically described them. Whoa, this is cool! Can you believe this is the middle of a desert? So now we've just entered the conservation area, uh, which is this massive, massive enclosure where the Shabowski's horses were released back into their natural environment. Now, what we're going to be doing today is to help the scientists um, with their long-term monitoring. So we're going to be observing the horses from a distance and collecting some data about them, which will help the scientists um, with their conservation efforts. But of course, before the practical part, there's always a bit of theory. There's quite a bit to get our heads around, but from what I understand, safeguarding this fertile area is fundamental. The reason why this nature reserve is so important is because it's, uh, it acts as the last um, ecological barrier against the encroaching sands of these two enormous deserts, the Kumtag Desert here and the Taklamakan. So the National Nature Reserve is part of a, a joint effort, a vital role it plays um, 
to prevent Dunhuang City from being swallowed up by the desert. It's happened in the past. In Xinjiang, the ancient kingdom of Lolan vanished into the dunes. The hope is that through a conservation effort and with more public awareness, it won't happen again. Meantime, we're back on the lookout for Shavalsky's horses, Earth's only surviving species of truly wild horse. These creatures were once extinct in the wild, and at one point, only 28 remained in the entire world. For now, they're nowhere in sight. Yeah, I'm not going to lose hope. We haven't seen any uh, horses in the past hour or so, but I mean, it reminds me of a time in Africa when I went rhino trekking, and it took us eight hours on safari trucks and, you know, walking in the sun and sweating all day and it wasn't until the sun set and we saw these shapes materialize out of the darkness and it was a whole family of rhinos so don't lose hope that's the key well it would help if it wasn't 40 degrees celsius and such a bruising ride <gasps> oh my god over there look the horses that's amazing <laughs> Oh my god! So here we are taking a bumpy safari ride into the wilderness and fingers crossed we'll be able to see more of these Shavalti's horses. They're quite shy so if we get up close and a bit too personal with them they'll probably run away but let's see. Let's, let's hope that we do find a few more of them because it was really cool. We just saw a few of them back there and amazing. There's only 40 of them in this reserve so keep an eye out for them. Given the colossal size of Westlake Nature Reserve it's almost like looking for a needle in a haystack. But hey, you never know. Oh my God. Records indicate that there are now around 3,000 Shavalsky's horses worldwide. That represents a considerable success for the captive breeding program, given that each one alive today is descended from just 12 to 14 individuals living last century. And despite the loss of genetic diversity, they seem to be doing all right. There's a little foal as well. Oh, two of them, three of them. Oh, that is so cool. So I think there are three adults and three little foals. And they're walking away from us. Now that we've got a good spot to survey the fire family, it's time to put pen to paper. So what we're doing as volunteers is to help these scientists uh, observe what the horses are doing over the course of 30 minutes. It's called extended monitoring. And we have to fill out these tables. So once we know what the family group is called, we can look across and uh, fill out what they're doing. So for example, whether they're lying down, sleeping, uh, eating, mating. And what's really interesting is that the scientists have had so much contact with these horses that they can, from a distance, identify who's who in the zoo. The male one walks in the back. So it's like he's looking after the rest of the fan. So the so the woman's the boss, huh? The queen. The male juvenile became an adult, uh -huh. and the king will uh, give, give the young juvenile an exile. Because, oh, you because mean? Because the king thinks that... Uh, yeah, it's a threat, it, right? Yeah, He's, it's a threat. Right, right, right. So, so the king horse yeah. will exile a younger, a younger male horse because yeah. he will find uh, that he's a threat to yeah. his position yeah. as the leader. Yeah, ah. even, even the king once gave, gave care to the young Jew. Even, even if it's his child, like his yeah. offspring. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's chaos! I don't know what's happening! I think there's a camel that's, that's coming our way and we have to run! We may be looking for wild horses, but this wild camel seems to have found us instead. I am in shock. That was crazy. He got so close to us. Actually, running after.
dangerous. Go away. I've seen a mythical creature or something. It's better than seeing a unicorn. Coming up next, we visit a thriving vineyard in the small part of the wasteland, help some conservationists with their field work, and get a taste of life at a scientific research station. Today we're going to be on the lookout for the wild bacterian camel so we can monitor these critically endangered creatures. Now before that we're going to go to a village called Erdun and it's a village that's situated just exactly where the desert meets the nature reserve and it's also the most western village in all of Gansu province. So let's hit the road! Erdun is a relatively comfortable drive down the highway half an hour from Yumen Pass Research Station. It's so hot and windy. And so dry that my lips keep sticking to my teeth when I talk. <laughs> it's punishing out here. I'm feeling like this great expanse of earth, thirsty and baked. Wait, is that a floating city? The mirage, I'm told, is Erdun, Population 300. It's not exactly what Desert Oasis conjures up in my mind. You know, palm trees and crystalline pools to have a dip in. But it's way bigger than I'd imagined, and way greener. In fact, almost every household in this desert town cultivates some sort of fruit, the most popular being grapes. One local vineyard owner tells us that the environmental conservation has helped increase their harvest. This 明年这些他们保护措施也好。Where Erdun village ends, the sand begins again. And so does our volunteer work. Woo! <laughs> oh. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> We're braving the elements. <laughs> and the rough terrain. Just so we can get to a hidden camera. And I think what we're doing is changing the memory stick because it's full or SD card whatever it is these days <笑>这就是红外相机放在这个野生动物经过的路线上会拍到就是野生动物行走的就是生活规律吧就是就是一个自录子我们现在就是要把这个打开要把电池换 你一般多长时间换一次？是三个月。三个月换一次，就是有动过来就激活，然后没激活，对，它是红外相机，就是有动物经过它就自己开始工作。你要是呃没有动过的话，保持一个静态的话，它就不工作了。It's got the feel of a covert operation. We know from experience that a wild camel can find us humans, but surely it won't be able to find that. The researchers do this every day, year in, year out, navigating the dusty trails on the trail of wild animals. From the top, the nature reserve swelters and spills towards the hazy horizon. The mounds we see are ruins of the Great Wall and its towers where soldiers once stood, guarding this precious, fertile region from invaders. We don't find what we're looking for, so we carry on. Then, after some rigorous squinting through our binoculars, we see movement about 100 meters away. Not the wild camels we were seeking, but a big family of wild horses. 
他的野性恢复的比较好，我们人一般比较难难接近他。他一般一般现在这个距离应该对他来说就是最安全的距离了。我们要再靠近点，他就会走了。Really? Even from afar, they're magnificent. It's hard to believe, but these creatures were once hunted. It's understood that human fault, habitat loss, and changes in climate drove them to extinction. But thanks to science and conservationists, their story shifted from survival to revival. So you might be curious as to why and how there's so much greenery in the middle of this super arid region. Now it's because there's a mountain range um, south of this area, and it's covered in snow. And when it melts, it seeps through the soil and saturates the area. And that's why there are wetlands that exist in the middle of a desert. How cool is that? But even though vegetation here is flourishing and there is plenty of moisture underground, animals can still have difficulty locating reliable water sources. This is especially true of the Chevalsky's horses, which were reintroduced into the wild at West Lake Nature Reserve in 2010 and 11. We've stopped by one of their main water supplies, so we can assist the scientists with one part of their extensive environmental assessment, taking down the pond's measurements. Because these horses uh, were bred in captivity and have been reintroduced into the natural environment, they haven't quite yet adapted to life in the wild, so the scientists still have to help them with their survival. So what they've done here is to create a water source for them. They've dug a little puddle into a water hole so they can access water in times of need. Even in the winter, the scientists have to come back when it's frozen over and they have to crack the ice open so the, so the horses can drink the water underneath. I guess reintroduction is a pretty long and difficult process, so I really hope that the horses will one day roam around this area free and truly wild again. Our next mission, plant surveys. Away from the wetlands, the soil is notoriously parched and vegetation is sparse. Much of this area is extremely arid, so the plants here have all adapted to life in this harsh environment. Now behind me here is a species of poplar. Legend has it that it can last for 3,000 years. So for the first thousand, it's alive and flourishing. For the next thousand after it's dead, it stays standing. And for the last thousand years, after it's fallen over, it refuses to disintegrate into the ground. And because of that, the locals respect its resilience and strength. Two qualities of the many that are required to survive in this harsh environment. Plants are just as much part of ecosystems as animals, and so they comprise a substantial proportion of the research done at Westlake Nature Reserve. So, as much as I'd like to keep camel chasing all day, it's not our only agenda. We're collecting data on the plants growing here, tallying the number of them in a fixed 30 by 30 meter area, and taking the individual measurements. So, you guys already counted how many poplars are in this area? Um, quite a lot. Um, we have divided the area into three different groups. Three different groups. Mm -hmm. And then we're... Um, counting each part and then we add them together. It doesn't sound particularly challenging, but it's almost six o'clock in the evening and it's still close to 40 degrees. Credit to the researchers who are out and about for hours in the searing heat every day. And these kids, good on them too. Instead of watching downloads on the devices, they're counting camel thorn shrubs. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 16. Ah, uh, 17. Oh, little one. Good eye, good eye. <laughs> 35 and 36. 37, 38, 39. Back at base, I discover that the researchers at Human Pass Station are multi-talented. Out of necessity, they tell me. Anyway, I know for sure that there's at least some skill involved. I'm going to learn how to make this special type of noodle. This is called She's making it look extremely easy. Check it out. Oh. Hey, this is fun. Oh, it's broken already. Oh. Hey, you want to He said, don't put it in, it's that bad. 
I'm generally a hazard in the kitchen, so I leave him to it. There are no supermarkets around, so everything is organically produced on site, hand picked, and like the noodles, handmade. Crops don't grow well in this climate, so meals are simple but hearty. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Service. <laughs> Uh, mm, 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 mm. Awesome, this is so cool. You know, I, I get to have dinner with these guys who are the backbone to this entire project. And I'm just so honoured to be here with them. They've made everything possible. And we've got so much to thank for them, not just because of, you know, letting us be here, but also because they're doing something so good for the environment, something so precious. So, <laughs> Coming up next. We continue our quest to locate the critically endangered two humped beasts of the wild and get much more than we bargained for. So we're back on the camel trail. Since that brief encounter with Dun Dun, we still haven't caught sight of any wild Bactrian camels. In this extremely erratic weather, it's decided that only one truck should continue with the camel chase, minimising the risk and maximising our chances. Turns out we're the lucky few. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I've finally seen some camels. It's taken a while, but. This is a chip. It's 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 a chip. 今年又下了两批。去年生的是一公一母,今年也是一公一母。Let's see how close we can get, I'm not sure. Because they're wild, they...他们不怕人吗? 怕。你要是走得近的话,它就跑了。你像这个,这一批是那个黄黄嘛。前面这个,它要看见你过去的话,它自己过来了。那两个母的,和那个小骆驼,它们就跑了。I mean, these creatures are just so wild, so to be able to get so close to them is unbelievable. Oh, it looks like they're starting to head away from us. Better than us. I mean, better than them coming straight at us to attack. These是骆驼有跟的加骆驼有什么不同？嗯，它们的主要就是反正个头比较大，腿比较长，身子身子比较小，容易奔跑嘛，不是？嗯，家养的骆驼就是腿比较短。Wild Bactrian camels are only found in China and Mongolia, and it's projected that their rapidly waning population will be reduced by another 80% by 2033. Adults are above 2 metres tall at the hump and can weigh over 800 kilograms, so you wouldn't exactly want to get in their way. They're so cute! Oh, oh my gosh! Do a quick stand up? Oh, yeah, 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 quick, quick. Where? Oh my gosh, we escaped. Oh my god, that was a close shave. I can't even breathe because it's so hot out here. I had to run away from uh, Huang Huang. Um, who is one of the two camels, the other one's Dun Dun and they're both like uh, there, there he is, Dun Dun over there <laughs> Dun Dun and Huang Huang their names together, Dun Huang <laughs> they were both rescued from the wild wild when they were around one year old so they quite like humans and I think they've come to say hello who knew that these enormous creatures could be so adorable <laughs> Oh. Oh, hello. Come on. Gorgeous. This is just surreal. Oh, 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 oh. Now I'm fighting. Oh my gosh. I think they're fighting for our attention. <laughs> Mr. Lu tells me that Dun Dun and Huang Huang are always bickering. In fact, Huang Huang once banished Dun Dun from the group, and it looks like he's doing it again. Now he's got the scratching apparatus all to himself to get at those scabby tick bites. Hello. 
What are you trying to say, huh? You've come back to destroy more equipment? <laughs> the reason why this uh, railing has been broken is because the, the camels are really itchy and they were yeah, scratching themselves on it. <laughs> and that's how, oh, that's how powerful they are. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, 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 that's my bag! Oh no, that's my bag! That's my bag! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh no, he just wants to scratch! Oh. These beasts are wonderfully dopey, aren't they? But they're still being illegally hunted, persecuted mainly for competing with domesticated camels and livestock for precious resources. Estimates say there are fewer than 500 of these camels left in China. It's urinating. <laughs> Can you hear that? He's defecating. Oh, here we go again. Guess we're going to be stranded for another half hour. So what the researchers are doing now, they're grabbing some dried grass and they're going to feed them to try and distract them from us. They know exactly where the food is. Oh, he's a hungry one, isn't he? He's drooling everywhere. With our volunteer tasks all ticked off, we drive 90 kilometres away from Yumen Pass Station for some scenic sightseeing. This is Dunhuang Yadang National Geopark, and the Yadangs here, these specific desert rock formations, are the biggest in China. It's believed that hundreds of thousands of years ago, this place would have been largely underwater, and what I'm standing on now would have been the riverbed. Now, as time passed and the river started to dry up, and the hot desert winds began to blow, it eroded the banks into what we see today. The grassy wetlands of West Lake Nature Reserve seem a light year away. It's as if I'm walking on the etched surface of another planet. Although wild animals have been spotted here, more often than not, this place is utterly forsaken, unmoving yet dramatic and eerily spectacular. Centuries ago, merchants, pilgrims and nomads on the Silk Road would often become lost for days in this natural maze. Some never made it out. As for those who did, they must have persevered in this unforgiving land with the same diligence and resolve as the researchers I've met on this trip. We need to protect nature just like we need to protect ourselves. I learned the two features of the life, the vulnerability of the life as well as their great ability. As cliched as it sounds, conservation is a joint effort. I'm so grateful for being part of this experience. You know, after spending all day chasing after horses and being chased by camels, I kind of forgot how heart-wrenchingly beautiful this place can be. It's moments like this when there's a sun setting and it's just endless stretches of sand and dunes and wetland and mountains in the distance that really puts your heart at peace. <laughs>